Hello guys, welcome to another episode of the Coms Lab by Comsi, the place where everything related to Amazon FBA and e-commerce. My name is Vincenzo Toscano, founder and CEO of Comsi, and today we're going to bring you a very interesting topic, which is basically how you can use your current assets to help your e-commerce business grow by finding the best funding solution. And that's why we actually bring you today Nicolaus, who is the CEO and founder of Myos, which is actually an asset-based finance solution for e-commerce businesses. So Nicolaus, it's a pleasure to have you here today. How are you doing, my friend? Likewise. Uh, thanks, Vincenzo. Uh, thanks a lot for having me here. Great to be. Thank you. Thank you for uh, being here. Uh, actually been um, um, interacting and working with my team for a while now. And actually, I, I love what you guys do in the space. Uh, I mean, we know that when it comes to funding, there, there are many solutions, but at the same time, most of them are actually not uh, on the interest of, of, of the, you know, the e-commerce seller. And I love the fact that you here, Myers, are basically shifting the way you you support them and, and the solution you provide to them. So it's going to be very interesting, you know, to give some eye opening to the sellers that see this uh, podcast to see yeah. that actually there are solutions that can be very reliable uh, to help them scale their business. Now, uh, before we jump into that and all the technical uh, information related to that, I would like actually like to start with you Nicolas. I would like to to understand how you actually jump into this space and what basically gave you the idea of starting Miles if you can give us some background there yeah yeah sure um happy to do so so I've, I've been um in the in the startup uh, digital um industry for a while now I um joined Groupon roughly 12 years ago if I remember correctly <laughs> and yeah, okay. um so that, that was my 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 start in the uh, in the, in this industry, and um, then uh, like started my first own venture in 2012, which kind of like was a spin-off from Coupon. Also had to do with couponing, but more in the food industry. Uh, did yeah. that for better part of six years, and then okay. in 2017 um, we started working on the concept for Myos, and the um, like. The, the way this 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 concept or this idea was created is quite interesting because it was um, more or less randomly um, a good friend of mine was at that time uh, a successful Amazon seller. So so, okay. so he was building up a small team, selling on Amazon, already had um, a good seven figure revenues, and nice. um, you know a couple couple different brands, most of the products sourced from China. And, yeah. and he really struggled financing the working capital to realize yeah. the goal that, that he wanted to realize the business. And um, in the end, he, he got a, a loan from a bank, um, like which had been his, his house bank in Germany for quite a while. And that came with six months of back and forth business plan. <laughs> came with um, personal guarantees, of course. Yeah. So, so wow. if you yeah, yeah. take a loan from a bank, you, 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 you have to, to take some personal risk. Um, I know, and and uh, it it also was a, a pretty classical loan, so, so with monthly repayments. And um, as I said, he was sourcing most of his products from China. Um, so if you're yeah. waiting two three months for your goods to arrive from China, and then maybe another month until they're ready for fulfillment, um, and you already paid four monthly installments of your finance, then it defeats the purpose because the the whole yeah. reason you got financing was to bridge the gap between. When you pay for your for your purchases and when you turn them to revenues, right? And that's right. Um, so, so, so these factors in combination um, basically led us to to sit down and brainstorm a bit of how you could structure a financing model that really fits nicely, you know, like snugs into the working capital cycle uh, or the or the order or cash conversion cycle that you have as a as, a, as an online seller. Yeah. Yeah, I, I actually think um, that's great because I also agree with you. I mean, uh, I mean, one of the, the tricky things when it comes um, um, to keep scaling your business is that a lot of these solutions are based on, as you said, personal guarantees and some um, and, and that can be very challenging for some of them to put the, their house in the line or, or their assets, yeah. you know. And I like the fact that you guys, in, in fact, take a different approach, which is actually analyzing what is the future potential of this product. 
and take the, the, the risk with them to actually support them throughout the journey, which is a completely different approach as most institutions do out there. So maybe if, if you and we, so we can start giving some context about how MICE can, uh, can work for sellers. Can you give us a little bit of what is the journey from maybe start to, to finish in terms of approaching miles, what are some of the things people should consider and go from there, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, maybe just in a nutshell, what does asset-based finance mean? So what, what approach did we in the end set up? Um, it's, it's the basic principle that as a, um, you know, as an underlying, um, you could say the, the, the underlying um, value of your loan is mm. determined not by your finances and your P&L, um, but is determined by the products you sell and the market okay. position of these products. So this is, this is the, the, the core principle and everything else is kind of like an, um, like derives from that principle. Yeah? Um, th that okay. means what we do in the end is we look at the products that you sell and we look at their market position on their respective marketplaces, or yeah. um, maybe you find them on a price comparison site like Google Shopping, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And um, we do a lot of search engine analysis. Um, so how well are your products ranked? What's their price point? What's their quality in terms of the five stars, all these things. And this yeah. gives us an indication of whether we want to finance these products and how much money we want to lend against them and at what price. Yeah. And, 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 and this is the model. And, and you can already see this is, like fundamentally different from a traditional lending model where you look at the, you know, at the P and L, where you look at the, the, the cash flows and, and all that and determine your risk based on that, which we don't. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. it's it's quite funny. We we are a financer, but we don't know the the profit or the revenues our customers make. <laughs> I see. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. And, and what what does it mean for the customer? Um, it's it's a very flexible product, and the journey usually starts by going to our website, signing up. It takes um, okay. a couple of seconds essentially to sign up. It's like the usual: you give your company yeah. name and you, you mm -hmm. put your password. And, um, and then once you once you signed up, you start a loan application, and this takes you roughly five minutes, sometimes less, sometimes more. Um, okay. The loan application comes basically in three parts. The first okay. part is you tell us like what is your order situation what's your supply chain situation and when and how do you need the money yeah because that's um for us yeah. there's always the basic principle is always um we have the the goods that serve as collateral as a security to avoid what you mentioned you know private guarantees yeah. and things like that so in the beginning we need to figure out um how do you basically how do you get these goods do you already have them in your warehouse are you just sure. planning to order them are they already on the ship so what's the situation with the goods okay. and then um who's gonna get the money in the end like if you have the goods in the warehouse and they're already paid classic inventory mm -hmm. you know then of course you're gonna get the money and um and that's the easiest form basically and you, and, and you can use it as you want for advertising or whatever you, you desire yeah Exactly, advertising, new products, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. um, and another situation on the other extreme is maybe you, you're planning a new order. And okay. um, so in, in this case, we, we would potentially directly pay your supplier to make sure that the goods, the, the money is really used for this order. And then okay. the, the goods are shipped um, a bit later. That's, that's also possible. And then there are a couple of combinations in between. Yeah, so th this is the first step. It's, it's kind of like a tree of small questions that are for you really easy to answer because you typically know um, yeah. <laughs> where you are, yeah. what you want to order. You should know. <laughs> you should know. <laughs> yeah. Um, awesome. The, the second, uh, second part is the, is the kind of like for us, for our evaluation, the most important part, that's where you tell us what you sell. So um, what are your products? And it's essentially just a list of product identifiers. It can be uh, the GTINs, the ERNs, or the, the, okay. the Amazon identifiers. And then... Um, uh, if you already know it, the, the quantities that you want to finance, yeah, and and then okay. we we can go ahead with that that list and and do our uh, our estimation, yeah. And the, and the third part is simply you can already start uploading documents or making comments if you have some special requests or something, and um, okay. like the usual disclaimers and check marks and and that's it. So so that's the whole loan wow. application. Yeah, yeah, straightforward. And, right? um, 
and, and, and you see there's no part where you have to um, plug in your bank account or where you have to upload your management mm. accounts on GitHub. Yeah. That's the, okay. the unusual part. <laughs> Yeah, um, actually, I, I wanted to ask you that uh, because, I mean, when it comes to applying to all of this, most of them, they want to see all your bank statement, your Amazon account inside out or your uh, marketplace. So yeah. for this, you, you you wouldn't need this at the beginning, right? What what you can optionally do at the beginning is give us access to your Amazon or Shopify account okay. um, for us to validate your sales. Yeah. So awesome. this is um, this is just to validate that that you really like already selling these products and yeah. and how many you sold in the last couple. For of sure. Months. Yeah. Good. Um, but um, you can also do this at a later step. So so we can give you a financing offer and completely unbinding, of course, um, a financing offer um, even before you give us your Amazon or Shopify account. Yeah. So that's okay. um, that's no right. problem. Okay. Yeah. Now uh, when it comes to applying. Um, the reality is, I guess, of course, you also need to have some presence already when it comes to selling online. And um, for sure, mm -hmm. there needs to be some minimum criteria in terms of when it would make sense in a, for somebody to start using you guys, okay? So maybe just for everybody watching this, what would you say is the minimum criteria that you need to have to even be considered to make sure the application is, is worth of your time yeah. and that you actually can get accepted for the program? Yes, yeah. so um, we, we try to support sellers from very early on. Um, okay. That's also kind of like our, our specialty because you can um, look at, like you can be a very small and very young seller, but selling very good products, right? So mm. your p &L is not quite there yet, but but your products are fine. And that's, that's a lot of potential. So we say, exactly. So, so, so we say as a seller, you should have around about six months or at, at least six months of e-commerce experience. Yeah, it doesn't okay. necessarily to be with, with this current company. It can be that you had a, a previous e-commerce company and, and can show some experience there. It's also possible. And the products themselves, they need to uh, be selling for at least 50 days for our algorithms to work. So, so we need okay. some, some history for the products that we're going to finance um, to to run our evaluation. And, and these are the, the main criteria. Um, the, the product itself sh ideally shouldn't be super cheap products. Um, so like uh, be below five pound or, or yeah, for sure. in that range, um, because there's, there's a, with these very cheap products, there's always a very high risk of um, a category being dis disrupted by, by new yeah. entrants or, or different yeah. products. Yeah. And um, then the financing usually starts at around 10,000 pounds. Um, and mm -hmm. it's, uh, goes up to currently two and a half million. So it's a pretty broad range um, okay. that, that we can Very cover. Nice. Um, it's just for regulatory reasons, uh, we can't go below 25K um, if you're not a limited liability company, like like in, uh, a limited. Mm. Yeah. I see. Okay. This is, uh, when it comes this is to... Okay, interesting to know. So basically the 25, you mean that's the minimum loan for a limited company that... They, they can ask for yeah, right? the other way around. If, if you're a sole trader or, or a partnership, then the okay. 25k is minimum. It's it's um, uh, to avoid you know consumer lending regulation. Um, because okay. we, it's clearly business loans, and, and, and this is reflecting that you know. for limited companies, it, it, there's no um, really lower ends. Usually, we start at around 10k. Yeah. Okay. Good. And now when it comes to the type of products, um, this is also a very important question because, I mean, in e-commerce, you can sell anything, right? Any, so many categories out there. So is there any type of maybe product that maybe has to do with uh, supplements or chemicals or specific type of uh, equipment that maybe you guys don't support due to the risk and regulations? Or this can be open to any kind of product in, in the commerce space? Yep. So generally, we're pretty um, open to any kind of product categories and, and don't differentiate too much. Of course, we're excluding everything that is like um, shady or said or illegal. <laughs> in, yeah, for in, sure. Um, that's, that, that's clear. And then since um, we're taking these products as collateral, they should have um, a, a certain shelf life, and that's 12 months. So they, 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 they shouldn't expire within 12 months mm. after the that's that's important very so important. very very fast turning um food uh, or, or pet foods or something like that um this we couldn't do because of the, the limited shelf life um but besides that it, it works quite well 
And where we are a bit careful in terms of product categories is products with a very short life cycle, like fast fashion, for instance, where you know, okay, this is fashion now only for this season. And if I don't sell this within the next six months, That's then it. it's out of, <laughs> out of fashion. And then, then yeah. uh, there's not much value in, in that anymore. So, so we would be pretty careful about that. And similarly to very short life cycle electronics, um, okay. but, but all the rest, like, like all the, the usual, you know, um, uh, e-commerce categories like sports and, and house goods and, and kitchen supplies and also in the B2B space, uh, we're quite agnostic. Okay. Now, when it comes to uh, marketplaces that you provide this support in terms of the funding, can this be applied to a any country right now? And um, and basically what I mean by this, can the business be located anywhere in the world and you're able to provide this funding or you're basically right now limited to certain regions worldwide? Yeah, that's um, it, it. Would be um, would be a dream to offer it anywhere in the world, yeah, <laughs> like just like sure. a software. And yeah. we're not quite there yet um, due to regulations, unfortunately, because like for every sure. country has different regulations when it comes to lending, business lending. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, um, so, so we need to uh, consider local regulations. Currently, we can support legal entities that are located in uh, the UK, of course in Germany, uh, in, in Austria, um, and then a, a couple of adjacent markets that, that we can do on request. Yeah. So if, you, if you're anywhere in the EU and, and you just come to us, then the, you know the EU, you have this, the service provider freedom. So you can pick any service provider within the EU. And then we are also yeah. able to find you in, in general. Um, but but actively the the markets I mentioned yeah we're currently also yeah. working on entering the US uh, because it's simply okay. like second biggest e-commerce market biggest Amazon market um, and and will probably be live in the in the next couple of months there yeah okay I mean something interesting that you mentioned is that what matters is where the entity is located I mean there are businesses that they could have the entity in the UK but they do operations in I don't know, Latin America. So you could potentially maybe yeah. do some of that, getting your lending in, in UK, but then use it for global expansion. Then you still pay everything with, with your UK entity and co-founder, right? That's yeah, that's a very good point. We, we, we always, in, in the business, we always have two geographies. Where's your legal entity and where are you selling, right? Like where's your marketplace? Yeah. And the, the marketplace geography is a bit easier. Um, if, if you store the goods in that marketplace, of course, we need to... Um, yeah. potentially adjust the, you know, the security contracts to local property law, um, but that's an easier part than, than really the, the, the regulatory finance part of the, mm. where you leave. So. Interesting. Interesting. Now, I also want to bring to the table uh, the flexibility that you guys bring in terms of payments, because one of the burden of using um, in terms of um, solutions in terms of funding is that most of them, they put you very harsh terms that you need to pay month after month and if you don't pay crazy fees and all of that so i was saying that one of your main benefits that you keep uh, pitching in terms of why you guys are different is that you're very flexible with that so maybe you can give us a bit of insights on that as well yeah yeah um yeah definitely so let, let's talk first about the repayment and then about the pricing because it's sure. kind of two different things mm -hmm. um the, the repayment that was our, our first priority when we set up the model, um, we said it needs to be as flexible as possible. So we don't have monthly repayments. We don't have revenue-based repayments because we said, again, coming back to this example in the beginning where you're waiting for your goods for three months <laughs> to arrive, oh, yeah. you don't want to make any repayment during that time. You want to Doesn't make sense. start yeah. repaying. Exactly. You want to start repaying when you make the first revenues with your investment. And that's why we said, okay, uh, we set it up in a way that it's completely up to you when and how much you repay, but um, it's always, it needs to be in balance with the collateral. So you say, okay, I, I have now my 10,000 frying pans coming over, they're in the warehouse, and now I start selling them. And usually like, when you order 10,000, we would maybe take 8,000 as collateral so that you have 2,000 mm -hmm. that are free. You can sell them, you can make the first revenues, and then you can use these revenues to make a first repayment. And the repayment can be over 500 frying pans, can be over 2,000 frying pans, what, what, whatever makes sense for your you know, logistics, for your fulfillment. Um, and, th and then you, you simply repay. 
um, and and do that three, four, five times, sometimes more often. Um, we yeah. have customers who do that like 25 times in one load, like 25 oh. small. <laughs> yeah. Also possible. Um, and, and then you're done, basically. Yeah. And, and, and this way, you, you can really synchronize the repayment with your um, with your needs for, for working capital. Yeah. yeah. Um, they, I, important to mention is we, we have one standard duration of usually 24 months um, that's uh, mm -hmm. like giving you the, the, window. the base time frame to, to repay the loan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think something just to add on, on this, which I like that you guys also mentioned your website, is that uh, if you take the money and and you don't realize after a couple of months you need it, I mean, you could uh, take it back and basically there's no no penalty on that, right? Uh, based yeah. on, on which, is, which is good because some other solutions, if you take the money, that's it. <laughs> yeah, you're bonded for life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I wanted to mention that. Yeah. That's 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 a very good point that, because that's that goes to towards pricing as well. Um, yeah. Nowadays, when you when you take finance, the pricing is oftentimes a one-time fixed fee, and these mm -hmm. players say, of course, super easy. You know what you're paying; it's one-time yeah. fixed fee. But it has a big catch, and the the catch is basically when you pay a one-time fixed fee, um, it, it's you're kind of like stuck with what you paid and, and you cannot save. And sometimes you have the situation, you, you suddenly you hit a record month, you pay off everything within a month and you want to repay. Um, mm -hmm. And then like you still then in, in, in this case, yeah. your effective annual costs, effective annual interest skyrockets with a one, one time fixed fee. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. That, that's also, and, and it wouldn't really work in our case because with our loan model, we don't know if you repay us in two months or in six months or in 24 months. Yeah. So mm -hmm. a, a one type fixed fee wouldn't work in that, that model. And that's that's why we said, okay, we um, we structure it more like a software subscription essentially. So okay. you, you pay a um, you pay a monthly fee, like you would for any software, but just instead of the user accounts or the amount of transactions or whatever you have in the in the software world, um, we take the outstanding credit as a basis for the monthly fee. Mm. So okay. Every month at the turn of the month, we say, okay, over all your loans, you can have like 10 loans, you have 800K outstanding. And this means 800K times your price gives you the, the monthly fee. And that's, that's the pricing model. As soon as you repay, you don't pay any monthly fee anymore. No. Very straightforward. So that means realistically that even if you sign for the 24 months, you could eventually drop at six months because you use all the money, then you pay it and then you exit it and no penalty there. Okay. Interesting. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I think, I mean, we cover a lot of interesting things, to be honest. I'm very excited about um, what you guys are offering. And, and that's one of the reasons why I'm working with you guys. Um, so before we, we conclude today's episode, for sure, I want to ask you if there is anything else you feel maybe we didn't cover up around your solution, anything that you want to share in terms of maybe a case study before we conclude? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I haven't thought of anything like that beforehand, um, but okay. uh, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> That's fine. We we can we can just uh, remove. That's totally fine. Awesome. So yeah, Nicolas. I mean, it's been a pleasure to have you here today. Um, for sure. Uh, if somebody wants to reach out, maybe they want to ask you something specific around, you know, questions specific to their business. Is there somewhere they, where they can reach out personally to you, and where actually they can, you know, uh, sign to the service? Yeah. Yes. Um, sure. For, for for the application itself, it's it's quite simple. It's um, myos.com, myos.com, and um, there you you can click any any of the larger buttons on the page, and it should bring you to the loan applications. <laughs> good. <laughs> um, good. <laughs> if, if you have any questions to me personally, uh, I think LinkedIn is, is the best channel. Yeah. Um, it's uh, yeah uh, e easy to find. I, I think my my LinkedIn domain is N H I L G. Um, so yeah, I'm uh, gonna make sure to put the link anyway and everything in the description so people can find. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's it's been a pleasure for sure. I'm gonna have you on future episodes as we start growing together. And in the meantime, I wanna thank you once more. Wish you an amazing rest of the week and take care. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Same to you, Vincenzo. Thanks a lot for having me. Take care. Bye bye.